Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about why I picked up a Switch OLED rather than waiting for the rumoured Switch 2. Now it seems like a bit of an odd choice at the moment with all the speculation about Switch 2 happening at the moment. There is rampant rumours going around, patterns that people are finding, and it is looking more and more likely that we're going to get a successor to the Nintendo Switch. But the Switch OLED is nothing to laugh at, like it is a very good console. And to understand why I picked up the Switch OLED, we need to look at how I got back into the Switch ecosystem. I was playing on a Switch Lite, which cannot connect to a TV. That it's its flaw. It can do just about everything a Nintendo Switch can do, but it can't connect to a TV. And when I was looking at the whole, should I buy a standard Switch or should I buy a Switch OLED? I was like, what am I going to be doing with it? Well, the whole point of having the Switch OLED is that I can play it without my TV. I can play it on the go. And I want the best display and, you know, little tiny things that the Switch OLED does that the base Switch doesn't do. The screen is easily an upgrade in itself. But one thing that I really like about the Switch is that it is the best console of this generation. It is the one focusing on games and first party games. Like obviously you can see the collection here, a bit of a collection. This is a Game Boy game. I've just got it as a stopper at the end. I've got some Game Boy games behind this as well. But you can see there's like, there's Mario Odyssey, there's Mario, New Mario Bros, which is, um, that's a, I believe Wii U game, but they've ported it over. You've got Mario Wonder. I mean, you've got a lot of Mario games. You've got some Donkey Kong, Zelda. Zelda alone is worth upgrading for. But the ability to play on the TV, which has been a base feature since the original Switch, but just having the new hardware, I thought it was worth an upgrade. And I got it as a cheaper price. I got this for $449. And you might say, that's a bit steep for a Nintendo Switch. Well, look at it relevant. Look at the relative cost compared to the big boys, Xbox, PlayStation. PlayStation and Xbox are charging at the moment. You can get a PlayStation Slim, I believe for about 675 on sale, or it might even be a bit cheaper than that. Uh, Xbox is still around the same price on sale, but this 449 is an all right price for what you're getting in the console. It's an OLED screen. It's basically the best Switch at the moment, other than what we think might be coming out or announced later this month, depending what Nintendo decide to do. Now, obviously I've talked about a lot about gaming and physical gaming. I'm a big physical media collector. And what I love about the Switch is they are investing heavily in physical media. Their cartridges, yeah, you can say what you will about Nintendo. Uh, let's show Minecraft here. The fact that Minecraft, Mojang, have a physical cartridge. You can see a receipt in there. But it has a physical receipt, a physical game, a physical cartridge. That's pretty cool. Like, I mean, we know Nintendo's famous for their cartridge designs, and they've been on that sort of thing since the Game Boy days. Tetris is one of the best games ever. I don't care what anyone says. Tetris for the Game Boy, everyone will know that's one of the best ports of Tetris. But you know what I'm talking about? Like, playing Switch games on the best that Switch have to offer at the moment is important and it's important to me because yeah i could wait until switch 2 everyone's saying it's rumored to come out in march 2025 and i'm aware of that i'm very aware that it might be coming out and there may be a switch 2 behind it but then you're going to get into this whole thing of like well it's like with people with iphones well you could wait an extra year and the next few years phone will probably be better yeah but i don't want to wait a year i want to play it now <laughs> you know it's the whole poor it's the whole thing of like yeah, waiting will probably offer better results, but there's, the Switch catalog is amazing. And as I said, they are very heavily invested in physical media. I did not have to install an update for Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey can play straight off the cartridge, and I think that's amazing. When you start getting into modern gaming, my biggest complaint with all the other gaming f formats is that they're not doing enough to preserve games. They ship often a broken game and they expect a day one patch. Whereas Nintendo have very good quality control. Now, don't get me wrong. There are things in Nintendo that break games. Don't get me wrong. They can, they are susceptible to it. But they do a better job. They do a better job of quality controlling these things than the other guys do. And I think that's worth getting into the ecosystem right now. 
I originally bought a Switch back in 2017 when Mario Odyssey came out. And I was very big on that. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm picking up the Switch. Played through Mario Odyssey once, and then I was like, okay, now what? And at the time, I don't think Breath of the Wild was released. And I was like, okay, um, I guess I could give my Switch away. <laughs> and basically what happened was my Switch sat under my TV for about six months and unused. So I gave it to family. But to get back in and play the Switch on my TV and get back into that ecosystem, it really is important to me. And people can say what they will about Nintendo. I know all the complaints against Nintendo and all this other stuff on the internet at the moment. But yes, it's not trying to be overpowered PlayStation, number one most powerful console. Here's the pro version that can't run discs. I'm not knocking PlayStation, sorry. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? They're not trying to be overpowered. They're not trying to be on the same par in terms of power as the Xbox or PlayStation. Nintendo have always done their own thing. They have said, okay, no, you're going to get a console-like experience, but on the go. And we can offer it at 1080p. Yeah, it's not going to be 4K, but it's something. You're They're prioritizing gameplay, which I like, and I like the experience of games. When you're playing a game, you're not really thinking, oh, this could be clearer. Oh, there's a bit of graphics there. When you're watching it, you're invested in the game and the story that's being given to you by Nintendo and the publishers for Nintendo. I mean, as I've showed a couple of times, like Zelda is one of the better games on Switch, and I'm still playing my way through that. But like, it's an experience. And look, you even get like a little poster in there. And the art is amazing, you know? But it's not something that I'm necessarily too fussed about, hey, I should have waited for the Switch too. I needed a Switch to play on my TV. The OLED was there at a convenient price. And relatively, it's cheaper than the other two of consoles out there. It's, switch it's cheaper than a Xbox Series S. Let's put it that way. And for the catalog of games you're getting, which is where Nintendo shine, I've got basically, you can see a lot of my collection right here is a lot of Mario, 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 you know, just basically Mario. Some Zelda. I got Pokemon Sword, but I haven't got all the Pokemon games because I'm not a big fan of their online service. I'll admit that. I think it, it's missing a few too big names. Like, they've got a few Game Boy games on there. Like I said, they've got Tetris. They've got Super Mario Land. Like, all the good games, like, from the Game Boy era. But they're missing Pokemon. Pokemon Red, Pokemon blue, yellow, they're missing Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal, you know, they're missing the Pokemon games that I grew up on. And that's big for me. It's like, I really think they should be on OLE, uh, on the Switch, on if it's the online service that should be available. I also think that they do a good job with some things, like Banjo-Kazooie is available in its Nintendo 64 form on the Switch online, and that is a game I grew up on, and I can play that. GoldenEye alone is worth, like, I paid, as soon as I found out GoldenEye was on the online store, I was like, yeah, I have to have GoldenEye. Like, I don't care how I get it, I just have to have GoldenEye. And GoldenEye is just one of those best games ever. I've got it on cartridge for the Nintendo 64 over there. But you see what I'm saying? Like, for me, having the better hardware, the catalogue of games for, for itself, physical media games, is the Nintendo thing. They have not went digital for the most part. They do offer digital digital downloads if you want to buy through that means. But Nintendo are very heavily invested in physical and doing physical releases. And it's just so much more convenient that I can grab something out of here like Red Dead Redemption, chuck it in my Switch and play it. It's just like the physical aspect of gaming is going away. But with Switch, they're still trying to preserve it. And where did I get this from? I got this from back here. I've got a bit of everything in here, like, you know, I've, I am a fan of how the Nintendo Switch plays. Given, I think there's things that could be better, I think there's things that might be improved in Switch 2. But then it's also the whole dilemma of, okay, Switch 2 comes out, it'll probably take a year or two for Nintendo to get, really get on a roll in the next generation. So I'll probably pick it up in like 2027 or, you know, and by then I'm thinking they'll be shipping a lot more of that hardware. So, you know, the first, the first couple of million consoles that they ship of Switch 2, you're probably not going to get in because the scalpers are going to grab those things. So I'll wait for that and this will keep me entertained in the meantime. And yeah, as I said, coming from a Switch Lite that I had the original Switch, wasn't a big fan of it. This made me a fan of Switch again. And I was like, yep, this is 
this is in my view one of the best entries to the switch because it's trying to be almost like a game boy you don't plug it into your tv it's not supposed to be plugged into your tv it is a standalone and when i do plug in my tv i get this stronger hardware through the switch oled which it's basically running the same thing the switch has don't get me wrong under the bonnet it's got a lot of the same features but just that metal design it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel cheap you know it's got that metal design it's it feels really nice and yes i am i'm a bit of a fan of nintendo <laughs> And I, I think this is really amazing. And I will wait to see what they do with Switch 2. I may pick it up on release. Don't know. But I just know that I'm going to enjoy the heck out of Switch while I'm waiting for Switch 2 to see what they do. And to hear what happens. And yes, it might be the worst time ever to buy a Switch OLED. But at the end of the day, like, I'm going to be playing the heck out of this while I'm waiting. But let me know, are you a fan of Switch? Are you a fan of Nintendo, like, doing the Switch uh, OLED model? Or do, were you expecting a Pro model from Nintendo? Or are you just waiting for Switch 2? Are you just going to wait and wait the generation out and just see what they do in next generation? Either way, I think it's pretty cool that I've bought a Switch and I've really been enjoying it. Like, when the PlayStation Network went down a few days ago, I was playing the heck out of this and playing Mario Odyssey. And I was just like, okay, this is... This is the good thing about uh, Switch. You can play it offline. There's no incentive to play it online. Like, there's no trophies, at least to my knowledge. There's not really... I mean, if you're, if you're buying a game digitally or using the online services, they will need to verify your online services. But essentially, I put this straight in the console, Mario Odyssey, and I was just playing it within 10 seconds of putting the cartridge in, you know? It doesn't have to install massive updates, day one updates. They're doing physical media right. And I'm going to give them that. They are doing a marvellous job of doing physical media games. And I know that's, that's a knock on the other two. But as I said, preservation in gaming is important. And the fact that these guys are actually taking time, quality checking them, and then shipping the quality controlled game rather than a broken game that needs a day one patch. I think that's worth paying what I paid for the OLED. And... I will encourage Nintendo to do that. I know people are going to say, oh, but Nintendo did this to emulators and did that to whatever. I don't care about all that. I want to play it in the way it was intended. You know, if I was going to go back and play DS games, for example, I would go and buy, I have a DS, I have a 2DS, that one of those big ones that kind of resemble a Game Boy. And then, you know, if I wanted to play other games, if I wanted to play other Game Boys, I could bring the Game Boy Color out right there, you know? There are other ways to play these games, and I think... I try to play it in the intended form as it was released. That's what I've always tried to do. But let me know what you think, guys. I'm really enjoying the OLED Switch, and for me, it just works. I think it is a really nice complement to other games. So, you know, for my first party, like my third party studios, like Rockstar and that, PlayStation's going to be the powerhouse for a lot of those. Uh, and then, you know, I might go with Xbox if it goes really cheap towards the end of the generation, because I'm not the biggest fan of Xbox, but, you know, if they did a really cheap Xbox, like, if the Series X was heavily reduced to, like, 449 as well, with the disk drive, I'd pick it up on that price. But there's nothing really for me that I can't get on PlayStation on the Xbox. I mean, Halo I've never been a big fan of, but, you know, essentially, I am not that keen to upgrade the PS5 Pro. I'm not even that keen to buy PS6 when it comes out. There's still a large player base on the PS4. And I think, yeah, when you talk about Switch, they're encouraging people through, th through, their, through their game library. They're encouraging people to upgrade to this generation. That's what I love about Nintendo. They're getting this generation right. They've prioritized the one thing that the other two haven't. Games. Put games out there. The games will bring the people. If you have the games, the people will come to your console. But the reason why people still play on the PS4 for the PlayStation is because the games are on both. And I'm not going to make this about a PlayStation rant. I'm just loving the OLED. That's where I'm going to leave it. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. And I'll get back to you in the next one. Peace.